Welcome back into, on this episode we learned that we don't need all these fancy things to have nice things and uh, we tear into this 350 that we got off marketplace for a hundred bucks. What the hell? Let's get into this. Looks like I need one here, here, and then some here. So this one I think might be in the wrong orientation, possibly. Figure that out. <coughs> Let's try to get these bottom ones where they kind of need to go. And then we'll go from there, I guess. And we need, these are 3 8 full. We need a bunch of washers. Luckily, I have. We got the engine on the stand, and right as I turn it over, you can see one of our problems. That's not oil. That's all water. So... Come on, stop already, man. I'm hoping that's just water that was in the block, but that looks like it's a lot more than what I was expecting. So this probably has water in the engine, which for $100 a marketplace, I'm not surprised. Really not surprised at all. What is this, Austin Powers? Come on, dude. Stop peeing. Sh no, no way. No way you're doing that. <laughs> Come on, stop. Oh, it's in the oil. You can see it. Oh my god. This is all the stuff that it puked out. I don't know this That's all out of, the, out of the engine. But that looks like it was full of water. Because I'm sure oil would have been coming out, right? And now that we can see the bottom of it, let's inspect it a little bit. I can see that there was a little bit of scratches here. Is that a crack? This whole thing is cracked. Hmm, okay. That's not good. And then all the oil. That was the dipstick tube. So a bunch of the water was coming out of the dipstick tube. And that is milkshake. So we bought a milkshake 350 off of Marketplace. Nice. Let's open this thing up, see what it looks like on the inside. Okay, so we have this 7 16 ratchet here. And we're gonna take off all these bolts. There's two here that are different on the front and the back. And then we gotta take this broken thing out of here to try to work on that. Let's see what the inside of this looks like. In the meantime, let me give you your mental health moment. If you look at like social media a lot, you'll notice that everybody who's going through their, you know, their mental health journey, they're always, they always seem to have more resources than you do. They have the ability to go to therapy in those parts and two places that's not actually the, the norm. You sometimes aren't able to receive mental health services because of where you are. It's not ideal, but it's not really, it's not as readily available in all areas. Some rural areas can't, it's really hard to find it. And then you have to also worry see if your insurance covers it. So there's a lot of like factors that go into place. There's some, there's some factors also that people sometimes don't take into consideration, like ethnic background. People like me, like Hispanics, mental health is not a priority for the most part. So whenever you seek mental health services, sometimes it's not very, people don't really like the fact that you're doing that. Parents sometimes think that it's like their fault for something that they did. I mean, in some cases it is, but not in all cases. These people have a lot more resources. It sometimes make it seem like for them, it's a lot easier than it is going to be for you. But you have to keep in mind, you're working with what you got, what somebody else has completely different to what you have. So you might go on YouTube channels here, check out all of these other people that are working on cars and engines and things like that. And they have these awesome engines. They have this huge budgets that they're working with. People are gonna have better resources, better things than you and whatever, but that doesn't take away the fact that like, you're going through your own journey and 
uh, stuff from other people don't really have any concerns over you but remember you're working with what you have same thing as we're doing here working with what we have we don't have a huge budget, nor do we have the best tools or anything, but are we going to make this engine run? Damn right we are. Let's see what's inside, because it's what's inside that counts, right? Okay. Oh god, that's not good. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. So remember, we're working with what we got, and what we got so far is a... This is a disgusting mess. You know what? I kind of expected this. For the amount that we got it for... Oh, there's stuff in here. What the fuck is that? I'm trying to find metal in here. So far, it just feels squishy. So... I'm thinking that it's fine. But this is this is bad. Well, let's get this oil pump off. Currently, looking under this tree with no place to put my tools. It's kind of annoying. But like I said earlier, we're making do with what we got. Okay, we're gonna check this into the oil pan over there. The oil pan is disgusting too. So, like I always tell my clients, before you go into therapy or anything like that, inspect yourself and see what you think that you need to work on. And in this case, this thing needs to work on everything and everything. And I want to see if any of these things are, like, moving. And they're not. So it looks like possibly they blew a gasket? maybe but what i do notice is that you can see here there's two little dots or this one has one this has two mm -mm. i don't know it looks like somebody was in here at some point maybe but you know how the hell should i know right i just work here so we do have a four bolt main you can see here because there's three four and hecho in mexico so we have a mexican block which is pretty cool next we need to get rid of this thing it looked like it was cracked earlier this is the oil filter adapter i think and this engine looks like it's been through some tough times i don't know what happened to it oh it is broken okay so I'm going to need to order one of these, okay, <laughs> noted, oil filter adapter, <laughs> it doesn't rotate, oh, what can I expect, right, 100 bucks on Facebook Marketplace, this is exactly what I asked for, extremely crusty 350 for that, ball main though, I wanted to throw a boost at it at some point, I guess it would stand it, but I don't know if we're going to do that. Oh, where do I start? You know where I'm gonna start? I'm gonna get a beer and I'm gonna come back. That's where I'm gonna start. After going to the fridge and noticing that I don't actually have any beer, let's take these main caps off and we'll arrange them into the trunk over there. There you know <clears throat> what we're doing. We'll put everything in the same orientation so that we don't lose anything or forget where things are going. Because that would not be fun. God damn it. Look at these torqued down to spec. If only I had a breaker bar. That'd be nice. You know what? I don't have a breaker bar, but I do have a pipe somewhere. I need to go to the gym. Buy yourself a old engine block from Marketplace. Try to take the main caps off. Everything's unbolted. Let's get these things off of here. 
I don't know if hitting him does anything, but... Okay, here we go. Whoa, that's rusty. See how this looks. Well... Looks like they spun a bearing on this one. Let's keep going. Okay. Don't look bad. Don't look good either, though. God damn it! It's a lot of uneven wear that I can see. You want to start with this guy over here? The trick that I've learned from watching so many YouTube videos on this is to leave it a little bit loose you hit it you kind of loosen them up I kind of heard that click there this has got a lot of uneven Let's see if we can pull this piston out of here. There we go. Disgust. But the rings look pretty good actually. Yeah, let's get going. Let's get this guy out of here. He's out. A little rusty, but still good. Now, let me get all the rest of these out, and then I'll show you guys what we find. And take everything apart. Honestly, it doesn't look too bad. These pistons actually look pretty new. The rings, they still got some spring in them, so they might be able to still use them. I have new ones though, so probably gonna change them anyway. These have some weird wear patterns on all of them. Good thing I got new ones. Hopefully those are the right size, but all in all, it doesn't look that bad. Minus the water that I found in there. So the next thing we got to do is take this pulley off, which I probably should have done earlier. So it's a 5 8 bolt. It's out here. And since I already took all the pistons out, which I probably shouldn't have, I just wedged the screwdriver underneath them with a crank. This. So let's see if this works. God damn it. There it goes. The only thing you have to make sure is that this big bolt here is actually sitting on the crank because if you don't all you're doing is pushing on to the pulley here or the you know this big thing right here you're pulling you're pushing on that at the same time you're pulling you're not doing anything so you have to make sure that you're on it right so you just keep cranking and it'll just loosen up slowly until it just pops right off at least that's what the internet says the internet's never wrong. There we go, all the way off. All right, next timing chain cover. You know, California is getting pretty hot lately, but today, it's a nice breeze. It feels pretty nice. Let me get these things off, and then I'll be right back. All right, bolts are out. Let's get off. Timing chain seems pretty good. We have another one, so we're gonna use the other one. Oh, they really caked this stuff on here. Oh, there's a bolt in there. Huh, I wonder where that came from. Keep those bolts close, because we're going to use them again. Here we go. Alright, here we go. We do have another one, so we're going to put that one on there. Okay, let's put these bolts back in here. Now we have something to hold on to while we pull the camshaft out. Okay, and everybody's favorite. Pulling the camshaft. Move you guys back a little bit. Okay, where are the bolts? Just slowly pull it out. You know what? I might be stuck on lifters. Hold on a sec. Let me rotate this guy. Let's take the crank out first. That way we don't drop it somewhere when we roll this thing the other direction. 
Okay, let me get the lifters out. Okay, now let's see if we can pull this thing out. Man, they really make this thing look so much easier on the internet. You know what? I think I know what it is. These mechanical fuel pumps, they work off of this little cam rod thing that's in here. And I think I'm getting stuck on it. Yep, there it is. There we go. Camshaft. Now that we got it all done, let's hit it with some oven cleaner. We'll hit it with some of this stuff from the Dollar Tree and then clean it off. No, this is not engine degreaser, but it is an oven degreaser, so it should work. <laughs> let's roll out to the center a little bit. Now to cover it, we're going to use some PB Blaster. The reason people do this is it displaces all the water that's in there. You can use WD-40 and stuff like that. This is all I had, so hopefully it works. And if it doesn't, then the whole thing's going to rust. But I think this will work. Uh, now we just wipe it down a little bit. Last thing we're going to do I don't really know when the next time we're going to get to this thing, so here's a trash bag. And we're going to cover this thing so it doesn't get full of weird stuff. And all you Ford guys or whoever's going to start talking crap, no, I didn't put this 350 in a trash bag because that's where it belongs. I just don't have any other place to put it, and this will keep all the stuff off of it. So calm down. It's just an engine. I want to show you something that I noticed. After I pulled out the pistons, I just, you know, laid them over there. I didn't do anything but rip them. But then I wanted to see how clean I could get them. So I kind of wiped them off. They look pretty good. Pretty good. And then I cleaned the top. Right here, it says 040. These are not stock pistons. And this engine is bored 40 over. So I have to return some parts, but I have to return some parts because of good reasons. I am pretty excited about this. See you guys in the next one where we clean it a little bit more, put the engine back together with all new parts. The quicker we can put this thing back together, the quicker we can drive this truck, I don't know, somewhere. So now that we know that it's bored 40 over, this is not a 350, this is a I'm not sure, but you know, insert number here. I'm pretty excited. See you guys later.
Thank you.